to invite you to come back in history with me for a few moments. Let's go back 175 years when Americans were devoted to the Bible. The vast majority of citizens in the 33 states of the Union were Protestant, steeped in the authority of the Bible to guide the affairs of life. Churches and religious societies touched every community and amazing foreigners with the pervasive religious devotion. But there was a dark and ominous problem that also touched every community and every lawmaker in the 1840s and 50s in our nation. Slavery. Specifically, slavery and the Bible. In fact, the Bible was failing America in the 1860s. Hi friends, I'm Larry Payne, your host of Fast Tracks for Well-Being. I'd like to use progressive Christian theology, psychology, and history to give us some insights about the Bible. The Bible is important to millions of people, providing inspiration and guidance, but it's hard to interpret. So today, let's journey back in history and then come to our present as we discover when the Bible failed America. What was the problem those decades ago? Well, the Bible was failing America because the interpreters of Scripture couldn't agree on what it taught about slavery. The common notion held that the plain language of the Bible offered perfect and universal guidance on every ethical issue. Esteemed historian Mark Knoll describes this idea as common sense literalism, meaning that every person could ignore the past theology to think for themselves and to read the plain words of Scripture. Those words would provide guidance intended for every ethical issue. It seemed unimportant to understand the historical context of the Bible, what it meant for those people who wrote it, or how the present interpretations were shaped by current culture. Each person claimed the right and discernment to judge the meaning of Scripture as it seemed plain to them. This common sense literalism produced a ferocious debate over the Bible and slavery in the 1850s. Those who came from the culture of slaveholding states could cite many Bible verses which seemed to endorse slavery as the norm for that ancient world or the Roman Empire. After all, Abraham owned slaves and slaves were a part of David and Solomon's kingdom. An entire book of the Bible, Philemon, was about a slave and his master with no real uh, condemnation of that practice. This meant that America should accept the slave system as approved by God. As one preacher of the slaveholding state said about those who disagreed with this view, the tree of abolition is evil. From it springs the utter rejection of scriptures and leads to utter infidelity. On the other hand, the same common sense literalism brought the anti-slavery leaders to a different conclusion. They said the Bible's greater message was of freedom from oppression, justice for all people, love towards all neighbors, and the dismantling of racial distinctions. In the Bible, Moses had demanded that Pharaoh flee the free the Hebrews, while Paul preached the church brought all persons together in equality. Wise people should recognize the difference between the mere record of slavery in the ancient world and the approval of it by a just and loving God. The debate over slavery ultimately split the states. According to Mark Noel, it also split the theology of the American public. In his words, the crisis signaled by the antithetical interpretations of Scripture centered on the adequacy of the Bible itself, calling into question the reputation of the Bible as an omnicompetent, infallible authority for life now and forever. The Civil War over Scripture, he says, did as much to damage the American theology as the shooting war did to the nation. From our viewpoint today, we can see that the problem was not the Bible itself, but the common sense literalism that interpreted the Bible. The intractable debate over slavery exposed the fallacy of this approach to the Bible. 
The mistaken interpretation came from ignoring the historical context of Scripture, which was written within a worldview that's no longer valid. It conflated universal truths about God and humanity with the flawed culture of the ancient world. A further error was believing that the Bible offered unvarnished ethical wisdom for all situations and cultures, rather than a treasury of wisdom to be translated into a changing world. Those sincere leaders of centuries ago were blind to their own biases as white men of European culture, leading to making the Bible merely a proof text of their own preconceived ideas. Now, I think tragically some of these errors in handling theology and the Bible are being repeated today. The current debates about LGBTIA rights, abortion, nationalism, the family, women, and the climate crisis are made worse by this conflict. Sadly, some interpreters today are rejecting the established views of science. Some are retreating to outdated views of humanity that promotes misogyny or bigotry, propped up by confusing theological systems. A recommended source for a better approach to understanding the Bible comes from Dr. Peter Enns in his book, How the Bible Actually Works. It's a resource that I would suggest you get. It's understandable and clear. Peter writes, The Bible was never intended to work as a step-by-step -step instruction or manual. Rather, it presents us with an invitation to explore to join an ancient, well-traveled, and sacred quest to know God, the world we live in, and our place in it. So today, we can be wiser as we open the pages of Scripture for the issues of our modern world. The Bible is a great source of truth about God, people, right living, and building community. It's not easy to understand and apply, but let's not repeat the mistakes that divided the nation in the past. We have resources today that can help us understand the Bible and ground us in solid historical facts, global human values, and a coherent theology. There is a wisdom tradition that takes the sacred truths of Scripture and applies them to today's world. That's what Bible leaders did as they worked from the Old Testament to the New Testament. That's what leaders of history have done as they sought to bring the Bible into their world. And that's what we are to do. So let's be wiser today about our Bible interpretation. And I hope you'll join me in finding and living out the truths that can bring the well-being for ourselves and our world.